when I use the word self-realization or realize yourself. It's to realize self with capital S, which is the presence that never leaves you. The beingness itself that constitutes that is the substratum of every other experience you've ever had. How to deepen in that? Well, there's no other way but to apply this shift in focus over and over and over and over and over again. Now, why do many of you perhaps not apply that? Or us, I could say us. Why do many of us not apply that? It's because we don't see the value in it. And so we tend to have to suffer a little more until we start to see its value. That's one way of coming back to the value of it. But we'll, we will always naturally practice or apply ourselves to apply and dedicate our consciousness to whatever in that moment seems to benefit us the most. So it's not a matter of discipline. Although sometimes to kick yourself in the butt is a good thing. And I encourage you to, with no judgment, just like oh, I've been slouching for a week. It's time for me to sharpen my consciousness, my focus, my self-awareness. It's time for me to do something with this precious resource that is who I am. That's a good thing. I beat myself up a lot of the times in this way. But there's no judgment, you see. It's just a fun thing. There is no judgment anywhere. When you notice something is quote unquote flawed about yourself or less than preferable, many people collapse back into, oh, that is so painful or, oh, I don't want to observe that. I don't want to recognize that. I don't wish to acknowledge that. Or they blame the other person for pointing it out to them. But there is a far more constructive way to deal with feedback, whether that's feedback from your own observations, from your own stumbling upon your experiences stumbling over your experiences and feeling less than preferable, less than optimal, or whether someone else points out that you have been kind of lazy the past week in a certain way, or that you have been this or that, to instead judge yourself based on that, or to believe that the other person judges you, simply take that as an opportunity. Because do you not wish to utilize the resource that is this moment more effectively? Do you not wish to apply yourself? in the most beneficial, self-loving, self-honoring way? Do you not wish to honor your life? Do you not wish to honor this moment? I think you do. So then take all that and have it be an exciting motivator, a catalyst for growth and a catalyst for sharpening your focus, not to feel judged, but to actually feel excited, to step it up a notch, to step up your game. Does that make sense? So none of this is judgmental in nature, unless you insist that it is, then you'll have that experience of it. So why do we not practice? Again, like I said, it's not actually a matter of discipline. In the end, discipline is not going to save you. It's not going to reveal this. It's not going to deepen your self-realization. Discipline is a natural, it's a natural result of knowing where true value lies. So to become more dedicated to what is true, whether that is self-realization or whether that is self-activation, like empowerment and becoming more of who you're meant to be as an individual expression. It's another way you can apply your consciousness. It's very beneficial. But for the purpose of this talk, let's talk more about the self-realization aspect of it. You're realizing the depth, the mortality, the changelessness of the truth of your being. Not so much why you're here and what your purpose is and what your skills are and where your creativity lies and how you can have your manifest life flow more effortlessly and joyfully. That's all great. Maybe we'll get to that in a little bit. But for now, to discover first and foremost the consciousness that never leaves you, the immortality of your being, the essence, the nature of who you are, of what you are. To deepen in that, you don't necessarily need discipline. What you need is clarity, the clarity to know where value is present and where it is not. So then I ask you to look at your life, the unconscious portions of your life, the stumbling over things, stumbling upon things, being a victim of things as they seem to appear outside of your control, outside of your consciousness. Just They just happen to you. Life just happens to you. Just the everyday state, or maybe it's not your everyday state, congratulations, your everyday state of stumbling over things, being slapped around a little bit by these experiences that appear inside of your consciousness experience. Just look at the past of your life to motivate you, not to judge again, but to motivate yourself into greater dedication. 
Because if you see that, how you have been unconsciously applying yourself, your consciousness, your precious resource of your life, if you look back upon all those experiences within which you just sort of went with it, whatever it is, whatever it was, and you're being slapped around, the more you start to recognize that your life in the past is not as you desire it to be. It's not of the level of clarity and consciousness and precision and joy and bliss and happiness and love that you desire to spend the majority of your consciousness time in. Then let that be the motivator. Let that show you that that's not where the value lies for you. The value lies in coming to greater clarity as to what is true, who you are, the fact that you're immortal, who here enjoys their fear of death. Is it something that you would like to have more of? Would you like to be more afraid of dying? Would you like to be more afraid of death in whatever form, whether it's a personal death, a mental death, an emotional death, a relational death, the absence of things that you like in your life, a lack of loved ones, a lack of money, a lack of joy, a lack of passion, a lack of clarity. That's all fear of death in a sense. Do you want more of that fear? If you look back upon your life and you see that you're afraid, you're an afraid entity, you're an afraid expression of infinity. Does that inspire you to become more of that? Or does it inspire you to transform that, to change that somehow? You see what I'm getting at? That you can utilize your awareness of your past unconscious experiences or your less than preferable experiences to sharpen your dedication so you don't need discipline. You're committed. You're naturally dedicated to apply yourself to what seems to be the most valuable. And if you fear to remain in fear for the rest of your life, that's a great motivating dedication to actually apply your consciousness to discovering that you're not something that can die. This is just one example. There's many reasons to realize what you are. There's many benefits to self-realization. But you have to want them. You have to see the value in it. And you have to be fed up with your life as it was or is. And it's not judgment. There's no judgment in that. It's just natural spiritual evolution. It's the evolution of consciousness, learning about its experience of itself, learning what is and is out of alignment, what is in alignment and out of alignment, what resonates, what does not resonate. And to see based on your past experiences that there's so much in there that you would totally like to transform. You would like to step it up a notch. You would like to step up your game. You would like to become more conscious of who it is you truly are, of what it is you truly are of the fact that you are eternal, the fact that you are limitless, the fact that you are an expression of infinity, the fact that you are unconditionally loved. How many of you wish to continue to believe they're not loved? Anyone? Is that an enjoyable state to be in? Does that resonate? Does that excite you? If so, congratulations. I'm assuming that for most of you, the answer is no. So if you see that for most of your life, you just unconsciously have believed that you're not worthy, you're not lovable, you're lacking all these things. You cannot just feel good. You cannot just be the universe. You cannot just be at one with your godlike self. You're not allowed to. That would be sinful. That would be arrogant. That would be unworthy. You're unworthy of all that. Do you wish to continue to experience yourself in that way, unconsciously? Or can that also motivate you to sharpen your focus and to naturally become more dedicated to discover that there is no lack, that you are one with the universe? That you are at the heart of your being, the creator itself, infinity itself. And that everything about you that is form, that is manifest, is simply a unique expression, infinitely worthy of unconditional love. And it is unconditionally loved. And it is eternal. It transcends death and life. Do you wish to experience yourself more like that on a daily basis? If not, that's totally fine. Keep on trucking as you have been trucking, as you have been doing. But if you want to change, if you wish to actually sharpen your self-realization, deepen your self-realization, then you have to be the one that wants that. You cannot just expect yourself to follow certain practices for a couple of days and then, ah, oh, okay, let's do this, let's do that. You can do everything you want to do. You can go to movies, you can distract yourself, that's all beautiful. But if you don't have the foundation of knowing that you're eternal, that you're free no matter what, that you're loved no matter what, that you're worthy no matter what, then none of these things are really ultimately going to satisfy you. They have to be expressions of truth. They have to be expressions of a truthful vision. 
the vision that you are eternal, the vision that you are lackless, the vision that you are limitless, the vision that you are unconditionally loved, you are endlessly worthy, you are endless abundance, everything is possible, you are meant to follow your heart, you are meant to act on your joy, you are supported in your joy, you are supported in your love, in your passion, in your inspiration, and you are at one with the universe, you are in fact the one creator, created the universe.